Well, look what we have here then. I think we've just been blessed. Uh oh. Low gains, men. This can't be good. Didn't we spend all morning asking about a woman by this very description, and everyone said they hadn't seen her? It seems we were lied to. Gentlemen, surely there is no need for trouble. These are no doubt simply more poor souls seeking refuge. They're more than that. Now stay out of our way, sister. You protect these traitors, you'll get the same as them. You don't need my protection, but these men will blindly follow their master's command even unto death. I am not the blind one. I served at Ostagar, where the turn saved us from the Grey Warden's treachery. I serve him gladly. Enough talk. Take the Warden into custody. Kill this sister and anyone else that gets in your way. Right. Let's make this quick. Oh. All right. You've won. We surrender. Good. They've learned their lesson and we can all stop fighting now. W what do you want to tell him? I'll tell him right away. Now. Thank you. I apologize for interfering, but I couldn't just sit by and not help. Let me introduce myself. I am Liliana, one of the lay sisters of the Chantry here in Lothring. Oh, I was. Those men said you're a Grey Warden. You will be battling the Darkspawn, yes? That is what Grey Wardens do. I know after what happened, you will need all the help you can get. That's why I'm coming along. The Maker told me to. Then... you believe me? <gasps> I knew the Maker had sent a true dream. A vision that by serving you, I serve his holy plan. Perhaps your skull was cracked worse than Mother thought. Thank you. I appreciate being given this chance. I will not let you down. Yes? Well, here I am. I knew this would come up sooner or later. I don't know how to explain, but I had a dream. In it, there was an impenetrable darkness. It was so dense, so real. And there was a noise, a terrible, ungodly noise. I stood on a peak and watched as the darkness consumed everything. And when the storm swallowed the last of the sun's light, I... I fell. And the darkness drew me in. I suppose I did. That was what the darkness was, no? When I woke, I went to the Chantry's gardens, as I always do. But that day, the rose bush in the corner had flowered. Everyone knew that bush was dead. It was grey and twisted and gnarled, the ugliest thing you ever saw. But there it was, a single beautiful rose. It was as though the Maker stretched out his hand to say, even in the midst of this darkness, there is hope and beauty. Have faith. In my dream I fell, or maybe I jumped. I'd do anything to stop the blight. I know that we can do it. There are so many good things in the Maker's world. How can I sit by while the blight devours everything? He's still here. I hear him in the wind and the waves. I feel him in the sunlight that warms my skin. I know what the Chantry says about the Maker, and what should I believe? What I feel in my heart, or what others tell me? Thank you. It's nice to find someone who agrees. I know what I know, and no one will ever make that untrue. Yes? Well, here I am. Quiet. It was a life suited for contemplation. In the cloister, away from the fuss and the flurry of the cities, I found peace. And in that stillness, I could hear the Maker. But it was not perfect. Some of my Chantry fellows were condescending. That is the nature of religious folk, I suppose. When I talked about my beliefs, that the Maker reveals himself in the beauty of his world. They treated me with disdain. They want to believe that he's gone, so that when he turns his gaze on them, it means they are special, 
chosen. He cannot possibly have love for all, the sick and the weary, the beggars and the fools. Thank you. Maybe I am wrong. But it is the Maker's place to decide if I am worthy, not men, not the Chantry. But there is work to be done, and I have talked enough for now. Yes? Well, here I am. What is meant by someone like me? And there were no beautiful, charming women in the cloisters, you think? <laughs> you would be wrong. There were many lovely young initiates in the Lothering Cloister. All of them chaste and virtuous. <laughs> it added to their mystique. Because then, there were forbidden. And forbidden fruit is the sweeter, no? My fruit? I... I... I can't believe I'm having this conversation. <clears throat> but no, I did not take vows. The Chantry provides succor and safe harbor to all who seek it. I chose to stay and become affirmed. I was a traveling minstrel in Orlé. Tales and songs were my life. I performed, and they rewarded me with applause and coin. And my skill in battle? Well, you pick up different skills when you travel, yes? Yes, of course. Um, let's move on. Yes? Well, here I am. Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Of course, Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Avelyn, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle, and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor, and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. 
the son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevaliers. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevaliers. I know one, told to me by my mother a long time ago, it always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devour of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon-touched, who dwells in the mists. Well, if Flemeth really exists, she would be very, very old indeed. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyever, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle. Flemeth was captivated by Osen's voice, and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Osen fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Osen to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Osen entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men and Osen was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle ran red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Which one? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south, and settled there in the land of their own. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The chantry says the elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the elven cities were sacked and the elven state completely dissolved. 
Some of the elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Andraste was the maker's chosen. The maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees and her victories converted many to the worship of the maker. Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the maker's betrothed, and Maferath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the maker. Out of envy and spite, Maferath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. The Tevinta Chantry claims that in Andraste's last moments, Hesarian's heart softened and he heard the voice of the Maker telling him to end her suffering. He plunged his sword into her heart, and as her blood washed over his hands, he became one of the faithful. Dissenters said that the Archon only converted because he could not stem the tide of Andraste's cult, and was forced to do so to stay in power. We will never know for sure. <coughs> Flowers? For me? Oh, they smell lovely. And there's something so familiar about them. These, these were my mother's flowers. She would sprinkle the dry petals amongst her clothes. Oh, they smell just like her. Thank you so much. Say no more. We all live. I... Have I ever told you I really like the way you wear your hair? It's very nice and it suits you. Simple. Not like the elaborate hairstyles we wore in Orlé. They involved flowers, ribbons, jewels. One year, feathers were all the rage and Lady Elise decided she needed to outdo everyone else and actually wore live songbirds in her voluminous hair. The chirping was quite charming for a while, but you must realize, terrified little birdies often have loose bowels. Yes, you can imagine what she looked like by the end of the evening. But I was trying to say something nice to you, wasn't I? Oh, forgive me, my mind wanders so. It's just that I, I feel so comfortable talking to you, like I could say anything and you wouldn't judge me. You see? This is what I mean. You're such a pleasure to talk to. I haven't felt this close to anyone in a long time. I really enjoy your company. And what would you do if I said I do? Very much so, in fact. Huh? <laughs> you must do that, then. 
perhaps later when I'm not prepared for it. Surprise me. Come then, let's get going. If I recall correctly, you have some important earth-shattering business to attend to. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orlé ruled. When Orlé was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orlé. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orlé and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. She was an elderly lady, very refined and proper. She had impeccable manners and taste, more so than a lot of Olesian ladies. Cecily was also kind. My mother was unmarried and with child. It was scandalous, and Cecily had every right to turn my mother out. She didn't. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dried flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white ferelled and wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orlé. But enough about that. Let us move on. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Val Royaux. Unlike other cities where the people have the lifeblood and the character, Val Royaux was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Val Royaux, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Oh, it would take me a day or two to talk about the many splendors of Orlay, her golden fields, her lush meadows. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orlay, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orlay. Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orlé is very fashionable. Almost ridiculously so. <gasps> but the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. When I left Orlé, the fashion was shoes with delicate tapered heels and embellishments in the front. A ribbon, perhaps. Or embroidery. In soft colors, of course. It was spring. Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. The shoes made in Orlé were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky, fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Ugh, just look at them. They're sturdy shoes, but sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Why did you hear this? And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Many use the two words, minstrel and bard, interchangeably, but to do so in Orlé would cause misunderstanding. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orlé, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite, 
and in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems. But it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. My skills served me well, but the day finally came when I decided to just put them aside. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry. And when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to see the Maker brought me here. Yes? Something you need? Um, I don't think you have the correct aptitude. I could give you some pointers, though. You may be able to pass them on to someone you know. Let's just go over there, away from the others, for safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Blessed art thou who exist in the sight of the Maker. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. I beg you, do not disturb the girl's meditations. Reveal Mother, I do not know this person. I'm sorry, but I... I don't know what you're talking about. Please do not vex her. She needs quiet and solitude to calm her mind and heal her heart. Why are you saying these things about the revered mother? Please go away. I remember there was a sign. Lediana, we have discussed this sign of yours. The Maker does not care to interfere in the affairs of mortals. This vision was likely the work of demons. The Maker cares for us. I believe he misses his wayward children as much as we miss him. My vision may not be from him, but it guides me to do what is right. My revered mother knew this. I don't know who you are, but you are not her. This is your home, your refuge. Do you truly wish to leave the comfort of this place behind? Stay and no peace. There is no need. I carry the peace of the Chantry in my heart. You are going nowhere, girl. I will not permit it. No, she is ours. Now and forever. Holy Maker. She... she was a... Oh, my head feels heavy. Like I've just woken up from a terrible nightmare. I believe we had some task to accomplish. Let us be on our way. Wait, what's happening to me? I lied to you, you know, about why I left Orle. I didn't feel like talking about it then, what happened to me. Maybe it will affect us, maybe not, but you should know. I came to Ferelden and the Chantry because I was being hunted in Orle. I was framed, betrayed by someone I thought I knew and could trust. Marjolaine. She was my mentor and friend. She taught me the bardic arts, how to enchant with words and song, to carry myself like a highborn lady, to blend in as a servant. The skills I learned, I used to serve her, my bardmaster, because I loved her and because I enjoyed what I did. She was a remarkable woman. I cannot fully express the admiration I had for her or the depth of my affection. I thought I knew her. My devotion to her blinded me to her less than noble attributes. You can say it was my fault. There was a man I was sent to kill. I was to bring Marjolaine everything he carried. I don't know who this man was. She gave me a name and a description and I hunted him down. I found documents on his body, sealed documents. My curiosity got the better of me. Something told me that I needed to know what was in those letters. 
Marjolaine had been selling all kinds of information about Orle to other countries, Nevara and Antiva among others. It was treason. Some. But I had always assumed Marjolaine only operated within Orle. This was an unhappy surprise for me. My life has barred, taught me that my loyalties should be kept fluid. My concern was not that she was a traitor, but that her life would be in danger if she was caught. Orle has been at war with so many countries, it takes a harsh view of such things, as I later discovered. I should have left well alone, but I didn't. I had to tell Marjolaine I feared for her life. She brushed aside my concern. She admitted her guilt, but said it was in the past. That is why the documents had to be destroyed, she said. I believed her. I kept believing up till the moment they showed me the documents, altered by her hand to make me look the traitor. The Orlesian guards, they captured me. Did terrible things to make me confess and reveal my conspirators. It was a traitor's punishment I endured. And at the end of it, all that awaited me was eternity in an unmarked grave. The skills Marjolaine taught me were good for something at least. I broke free when I saw the opportunity. I did not seek Marjolaine out. If she thought I was coming for her, she would have me caught again. I was tempted to confront her. I was furious, betrayed. But what could I do against her? And so I fled to Ferelden, to the Chantry and the Maker. Ferelden protected my person, and the Maker saved my soul. And that is the reason I am here. The real reason. No more lies between us, at least in this. It feels good to have this off my chest. Thank you for listening and understanding. Stop! Don't kill him! He is no common bandit. None of them were. Their weapons and armor are of fine make, and they are well trained. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? Who are you? <laughs> Someone who regrets taking you on. I was told it would be an easy job. Kill the little red-haired girl. Deal with the others as we pleased. Kill the... You came to kill me? I don't pay to ask why someone wants someone else dead. I just need to know what to do and where to get my money. Ha! Money. I'll be lucky to get away with my life, it seems. <laughs> Maybe we could work something out. You like the idea? Speak quickly. I've no real quarrel with you. It wasn't me that wanted you dead. But I know how you can find the one who does. I have some directions written down on how to get to the house. It's in Denrim. Yeah, it's the best I can do. Thank you. Now leave. I never want to see you again. Don't worry. I'll not trouble you no more. It's Marjolaine. It has to be. Maybe someone saw me. Maybe she's finally found me, and wants to finish what she started. Perhaps it's time to settle this score for good. Alistair is quite fond of you, isn't he? Oh, don't pretend you don't know what I'm talking about. It's obvious. He's not very good at being subtle. I like Alistair. I don't know if there's anyone who doesn't, but I... I was wondering if there was something more between you two. I've seen you flirting with him. You may think it's harmless and means nothing, but I see that he's quite taken with you. Alistair is a wonderful person, and you shouldn't give him false hopes if you do not mean to go further. He deserves better. Me? Upset? No, not at all. I just... I just think you should be careful about what signals you send to others. I'm sorry if you think I nag. I just care a lot about you, and Alistair, of course. I don't want to see anyone hurt. I... 
happened to be speaking with Zevron yesterday. He tells me you two have been... intimate. I... I don't know what to think. I didn't realize you were at all attracted to him. I thought we... A lie. Why would Zevran make something like this up? Eh, yeah, true enough. Often I do not know what to make of him. Anyway, I'm glad we sorted this all out. I knew there was more to it than what Zev told me. I have heard much about the halls of the Dwarven Kings, but the stories do it no justice. It is so strange, harsh, yet beautiful. And have you seen those tiny pig-like burrowing animals? They are adorable. I wish I could have one as a pet. But they must be hard to catch and... Oh, just ignore me. I'm so silly sometimes. Let's just go. Your clothes are so fancy. Did you get them topside? My ma'am used to say they don't got no stone to protect them topside. If I go up there, I'm gonna fall into the sky. Yes. <laughs> when my doll left, he never came back. Who's to say he didn't fall up, eh? Nugs? Yes. They don't got much meat on them, but down here you can't be picky. Better than nothing. What for? You going to cook them up yourself? Yeah, I can find a nug for you. Could even get one from outside the city. Those ones in the deeps don't eat as much garbage. I don't know what they eat, but they always seem healthier, you know? Shiny coats, bright eyes. How much you giving me? Real silver, huh? I'll get you a big one for that. Give me some time. I'll hunt him down for you. I got him. He's all squirmy, but he's a big fella. Forty silver? Real silver? I... I could buy something proper with that. A good meal, maybe a real blanket. I knew you'd be good on your word. Nice doing business. Oh, it's one of those subterranean bunny pigs. Oh, look at him. Come here, you. Thank you so much. You've made my day. Stars are out. It comforts me to know that the stars will remain untouched by the blight. That whatever happens down here, they will shine eternally. Their light undimmed. There is a story about that cluster of stars over there. Do you know it? Elindra and her soldier? A long time ago, there lived a fair maiden called Elindra. She had many suitors, but spurned them all for she did not love them. One day, Elindra was sitting by her window in her father's castle, singing and dreaming when her lovely voice caught the attention of a young soldier. Entranced by her song, the soldier drew near to Elindra's window. As their eyes met, he fell in love with her, and she with him. When Elindra told her father about the man she had chosen, he was furious, for Elindra was high-born, but her love nothing more than a common soldier. To keep them apart, he had Elindra imprisoned in the highest tower of his castle, and sent her soldier to the wars. Alas, not a month had passed before news of the soldier's death reached Elindra. Alone in her tower, Elindra wept for her love and beseeched the guards to deliver her from this cruel world. So earnest was her plea that the gods themselves were moved. They gathered Elindra into their arms and lifted her high into the heavens, where she became a star. The gods also raised up the soul of Elindra's soldier love, and there he dwells, across the horizon from her. The band of stars between them is a river of Elindra's tears, cried for her lost love. They say that when Elindra has cried enough, she will be able to cross the river to be reunited with her soldier. This story is one of my favorites, a tale of a love so great and so enduring that it defies death and moves the gods to action. Sometimes I ask myself, does such a love exist? Can it exist? I never expected you to say that. It is a pleasant surprise. I have to say there is a certain severity to you. Finding a person behind that all is nice.
Maybe you should let your softer side show more often. Sometimes, following your heart, not your head, leads you to remarkable places. I was just thinking about what happened to the elves, and I am reminded of a song sung to me many years ago. It was when my mother died, and this wise elven woman comforted me and told me that we shouldn't fear death or hate it. Death is just another beginning. One day, we must all shed our earthly bodies to allow our spirits to fly free. It's a beautiful sentiment, I think. One that brings peace and hope to the grieving. Liliana? Ah, oh, so lovely to see you again, my dear. Spare me the pleasantries. I know you're... Oh, you must excuse the shabby accommodations. I try to be a good host, but you see what I have to work with. This country smells like wet dog everywhere. I cannot get the smell out. Even now it is in my hair, my clothes, ugh! Canary mercenaries. Expendable. And this way I don't have to pay them. Good for both of us. But I am not unarmed or unguarded. I have more men watching, ready to attack on my word. So perhaps we should just talk now, yes? You framed me, had me caught, and tortured. I thought that in Ferelden I would be free of you, but it seems I am not. What happened to make you hate me so? Why do you want me dead so badly? Dead? Nonsense! I know you, my Liliana. I know what you are capable of. Four or five men you can dispatch easily. They were sent to give you cause to come to me. And see? Here you are. You are so transparent. What are you up to, Marjolaine? Why are you in Ferelden? In truth, you have knowledge that you can use against me. For my own safety, I cannot let you be. It did you think I did not know where you were? Did you think I would not watch, my Liliana? What is she up to, I thought. The quiet life, the peasant clothes, hair ragged and messy like a boy. Uh, this is not her. 
You were planning something, I told myself. So I watched. But no letters were sent, no messages. You barely spoke to anyone. Clever, Liliana, very clever. You almost had me fooled. But then you left the Chantry so suddenly. What conclusion should I draw? You tell me. You think I left because of you? You think I still have some plan for... for revenge? You are insane. Paranoid. Oh, is that what you think? If I were you, I would believe nothing, she says. Not a one. She will use you. You look at her and you see a simple girl, a friend, trusting and warm. It is an act. I am not you, Marjolaine. I left because I didn't want to become you. Oh, but you are me. You cannot escape it. No one will understand you the way I do, because we are one and the same. Do you know why you were a master manipulator, Liliana? It is because you enjoyed the game. You reveled in the power it gave you. You cannot change or deny this. Thank you. You will not threaten me or my friends again, Marjolaine. I want you out of my life forever. You've caused too much pain for too many, Marjolaine. It ends here. And you think you can kill me like that? I made you, Liliana. I can destroy you just as easily. Dear me, it's over. She's dead. She's dead because of me. I... I need some time to myself. We... will talk later. Oh, hello. Is there something you wanted to talk about? It's... it's nothing. I'm fine. I'm just thinking. I can't get what happened out of my head. I'd been in Lothering for years, and she still thought I was plotting against her. She didn't trust me. Maybe she never did. She loved me when she could use me and control me. And now that she can't, she wants me dead. It... It hurts to realize that I never really knew her. I knew she was ruthless. But I didn't know how far she could go. She is self-serving. Cruel. She uses people, then discards them. But that's how she survives in the life she leads. What? What if she's right? What if we're the same? I... I should just have stayed in the Chantry. Maybe, but that is not the point. I was a different person there. I forgot my life as a bard while I was in the cloister. I felt safe. I didn't have to watch my back all the time. That's what made Marjolaine the person she is, don't you see? It ruined her. It will ruin me too. It's already happened. When we killed her, I... I enjoyed it. Seeing her dead gave me satisfaction. But that is no reason to rejoice over her death. That is what she would do. I don't want that. What we're doing. What we've done. Hunted men down. Killed them. Part of me loves it. It invigorates me, and this scares me. I... I feel myself slipping. I admit that I took great pleasure in the intrigue back in Orlais. It was dangerous and chaotic and exciting. But it destroyed my life. I thought the Chantry showed me another path. I thought I was done with this life. Am I wrong? There is this thought that floats into my mind constantly. That I lie when I say the Chantry gave me peace, when in truth it... It bored me. Here, with you, knowing the freedom of the road and the uncertainty of tomorrow, I feel alive again. I would like to be alone for now. I have many things to consider. Thank you for listening to me. I enjoy the nights at camp.
The night always seems more peaceful to me, safer. I feel the night grants us a reprieve from the troubles of the day. Silly, isn't it? The darks will never sleep, and they lurk in the shadows. I enjoy those nights when we stand guard together, talking to pass the time in those small hours. Well, I talk and you listen, mostly. Sometimes, I succumb and fall asleep and wake to find you still watchful, and I know you're watching out for me. What I'm trying to say is, is that I trust you. I'm comfortable around you. I know you'll be there when I need you. You are our, our leader and my friend and sometimes I think that maybe we could be more than that. Maker, look at me stumbling over my words like an ill-educated peasant girl. Some bard I am. I'm not embarrassed. I'm just flushed because of the heat. Really? N no one told me. You you felt the same way and didn't do me the courtesy of informing me? You made me say all those things. Why couldn't you have said them first? Oh, you... Oh, how very awkward. Why am I being such a baby about this? I must be a sight spilling my guts. Well, I, um, that settles it then. Do you remember our discussion? I just wanted to tell you that I thought about what you told me, and you were right. I didn't want to admit it, even to myself, but those years in Lothering, I yearned for the freedom and the recklessness that I knew in Orlais. The Maker made the world beautiful, but he also made it dangerous. To really experience it, I have to embrace this, not, not hide away in some nunnery. Sometimes, it takes another to show us the truths we hide from ourselves. Maybe. You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? It has been some time since I left Lothering. When I stepped out of the cloister, I had no idea where my path would lead. I walked where the Maker led me, and he has rewarded me for my faith. I found you. You don't know how it makes me feel to hear you say that. But now it's getting late. I think I might turn in early. I can't help thinking about how soft and warm my bedroll is. You're welcome to join me, of course. The Maker says we must share our blessings. Good. Now come with me before I lose my patience. I was watching you sleep. Did you know your eyelids flutter when you dream? And you have such pretty eyelashes. So I hear. I'm so happy, blissful. I haven't slept so well since I was forced to flee from Orlais. Knowing you will be the first thing I see when I wake gives me no small amount of comfort. I feel safe in your arms. Safe, loved and accepted. This is where I belong. Thank you. I suppose I should get up. We have a long day ahead of us. Come on. Darkspawn await with bated breath for you to put them out of their misery. What are you... Oh, I see. Mm. 
I suppose the darkspawn will just have to wait a bit longer. You've seen and touched Andraste's ashes. They are the holiest thing on this earth, the remains of the Maker's Chosen. I do not know if I am worthy to look upon her. Yes, of course, but it still is something to be in awe of. Now, and be glad I... Ah, a Grey Warden. And I had heard that all the Ferelden Wardens were killed or exiled from this place. Oh, don't look so surprised. I've seen many of your kind in my journeys, and there is always something... odd about you. But... Grey Warden or no, it is refreshing to see another woman who answers to no one. So you say, but the fire in your eyes and purpose in your step tell me that you know you could easily silence any of your dissenters. I assume you saw that little drama, and none of these poor brutes has ever proven a match for me. They are too clumsy and predictable. I fight with quickness and wit, rather than with brute force and strength. I call myself a duelist because I honed my skills in duels with warriors I encountered over the years. <laughs> An unusual request, coming from a fearsome slayer of Darkspawn. I am flattered that you wish to learn from me, sweet thing. But I have watched you, and you seem to lack a particular grace that is required. You are accustomed to doing battle a certain way, yes? I can teach you some basics. Perhaps you can pass it on to someone who might be interested in what I have to offer. I do, however, wish to get to know my potential student better. So we shall call for a drink, and you will honor me with a game. Do you have something else in mind? Oh, and now you've piqued my interest. It would surely be rude of me to decline such a delicious offer. You're going with her? I... I thought you were joking. I can't let you do this. Not without me. Um, keeping an eye on the both of you. Who am I to deny such a pretty little thing as yourself, my dear? You are welcome to join us. <laughs> too, too, too much to handle. Stone. Come. My ship is down by the docks, and I am sure you will find my cabins quite comfortable. She's quite feisty, isn't she? And you said she was a cloistered sister? I dare say the cloisters must be teaching things other than the chant of light. Oh, no, no. I learned those things in Orle. Bored noble women often come up with various methods of self-amusement. I see. <laughs> uh, perhaps we could talk more about this later, Leliana. Now, wasn't there something you wanted from me? A lesson, perhaps. Come, we will need some space for this. Mm, I have not given this a lot of thought. What will I do? We've traveled far and wide. Does it need to end? There's so much out there. Adventures to be had and stories to be told. I want to be part of it all. I might need some company. And you're not too irritating. You're welcome to come along if you like. It is settled then. You and I wandering the world, seeking our fortunes. I can't wait. I admit I have done many despicable things in my lifetime. I do what I have to do. So do you. So does everybody. Sometimes we must do terrible things to get what we want. If it is any consolation, I always try to use non-violent means to achieve my ends. Some bards rely on torture to get what they want. It works effectively, as many will bend under the threat of bodily harm. But there are better ways, more subtle and kind. You will be surprised how easily a person will open up to you, even if all you offer is a listening ear. 
people respond eagerly to others who they believe understand them. They seek approval, friendship, sometimes love. This can be exploited. It is a game, one that can be won with little bloodshed if one plays well. And crude. Why not make someone want to do what you suggest, instead of forcing them to do it? Everyone can be seduced by the right woman. The trick is predicting who she is and becoming her. Master the game and no one can resist you. If I might be so bold, yes, I was quite good at it. Sometimes, all I had to do was toss a glance and a smile. Men read promises into such things and will go to great lengths to see that promise fulfilled. I could... what? Oh, aren't you funny? I see your point. <laughs> we will slay this darkspawn using conventional means, pointy sticks and all that. But come, it is getting late and there is much to be done. This is it. This is the end. We've come so far. It's strange knowing that all our fates will be decided in a matter of hours. We stand on the precipice before the greatest battle of our age. I wonder if the heroes of old ever felt like this. I am not afraid. We go to fight for a good cause, and there is nowhere else I would rather be. You are my dearest friend and my love. You lit my path through darkness, and I will stand with you to whatever end. This day, we will forge a legend of our own. So here we are. The conquering heroine has won the day, and now she takes her bow and exits the stage. A fine ending. Aren't you getting married soon to a king? There's a rumor. Is that so? Well, all right then. <laughs> you know, I can't help now but think of my vision. Whether it was the maker sending me to you or whatever, it was a good thing. I thought I was supposed to save you, to show you the way. But it seems it was meant to be the other way around. Odd how that works, no? So, if I heard right, you'll be staying here in Denerim. As it so happens, my plan is to do exactly the same thing. I'm pretty sure that whatever you get up to, it will involve plenty of excitement by anyone's standards. At any rate, I should let you get back to your celebration before someone drags you away. I look forward to seeing you again afterwards. The Resolutionists. I might have known they would be part of this. Are you Sister Nightingale? I am, or you may call me Liliana. The Divine sent me to investigate the possibility of a rebellion here in Kirkwall. Without informing the guards, of course. This is an unconventional situation. I have some experience with those. The Liliana? Who accompanied the hero of Ferelden to slay the Archdemon? Ah. I see it will be harder to remain anonymous so near the Ferelden border. Yes, I knew the hero of Ferelden. She is dear to my heart. I am working for the Divine now, in Orle. I had not thought to return to this part of Thedas. Who are the Resolutionists? An offshoot of a fraternity within the Circle of Magi. There have always been factions that support freedom from the Chantry and the abolition of the Circle. We have tolerated them, but the Resolutionists have become violent. They are likely behind the unrest here. I hardly imagined the Divine secret agent looking like you. That is why I am effective. The Divine has long suspected that Kirkwall's problems were spurred by an outside group. This attack proves she is right. Will the Divine send soldiers? 
Divine Justinia takes the situation here very seriously. She believes it is the worst threat to Thedas since the Cunara invaded. A handful of apostates? How can that possibly... <laughs> the whole world is watching Kirkwall. If it falls to magic, none of us are safe. Tell Elthina to leave. There is refuge for her at the Grand Cathedral in Orlais. She will not be safe here. Listening. You seem to know a great many people. I have made friends, and on occasion enemies. It's unavoidable. You have a history with the Warden who ended the Blight, don't you? She's always in my thoughts. Even when we're far apart, my love is on a quest of her own. When the Inquisition has no further need of me, I will join her. For good this time. I have lost enough. I will not lose her as well. The Templars will be an asset to this Inquisition. It's a shame we couldn't also get the mages on our side. The Divine's death hit you hard. How have you been feeling? Oh, you are referring to my outburst in the Haven. I... I am much better now. Justinia was such a dear friend and... There were so many things going wrong. Sometimes it's best to talk these things out. I was with a hero, Thorelden, when she defeated the Archdemon. With her by my side, anything was possible. She married King Alistair. But it didn't matter. She loved me. But there is no happily ever after. Not when life goes on. When the Divine requested my help, I went to her. I owed her that much. I sacrificed so much to do the Maker's work. But now, Justinia is dead. I was angry. I felt betrayed. But I shouldn't have let my emotions get the better of me. I'm sorry. Don't apologize. You were grieving and upset. I understand. Thank you. Now, enough of this. Let us think more pleasant thoughts. Lady Liliana. Nightingale of the Imperial Court, veteran of the Fifth Blight, mistress to the Queen of Ferelden. It's just as I remember it. You didn't tell me you'd been here before. The hero of Ferelden and I came here after the Blight to visit Justinia. She was just Dorothea then, a revered mother. What we learned at Adamant concerns me. The hero of Ferelden and I have been together for years. I nearly lost her to the odd demon. She's looking for a way to stop the calling from taking her, as it does every Grey Warden. But if Corypheus has power over the Wardens, my love could be in danger. If you two are still together, why isn't she here? Her quest took her far to the west, to lands that have never known the Blight. But Justinia needed me here. I owed her that much. My love and I are never truly apart. When this is all over, I will join her again. And this time, nothing will come between us. What makes her think she can stop the calling? It has been done before. Grand Enchanter Fiona was once a warden, but something took all trace of the calling from her. A warden mage named Avernus also found a way to prolong his life with magic. It wasn't much, but enough to start the hunt. She will find a way. I have faith in her. Were the two of you happy together in the years after the Blight? Happier than you could imagine. The only shadow over our love was knowing that one day I would lose her to the calling. Her quest is for me as much as for her. She knows how much I have lost. What would you like to do? I do not know where the hero of Ferelden is precisely, but I know how to get a message to her. She may have information that helps the Inquisition. At worst, it will do no harm. I will draw up a plan in the war room. Thank you.
I was pondering who might be divine, and it suddenly occurred to me. Is it so ridiculous for the Grand Clerics to support me? Why shouldn't they? She was held back by tradition and was too gentle to force change. I will make that mistake. I received a note from the hero of Ferelden. She misses me. I very much needed to know she was still out there fighting to be with me. Thank you. It is a great relief, and I appreciate you allowing me to send the messenger. Now, can I help you with any- One month after the defeat of Corypheus, the Chantry names Leliana as successor to the Sunburst Throne. Given the name Divine Victoria, she first declares an end to the Circle of Magi. The mages will now govern themselves. She opens the priesthood to other races, declares support for the Inquisition, and rededicates the Chantry to the principle of charity. Divine Victoria is controversial from the start. Several new sects arise, resisting her reforms and declaring her rule a threat to the faith. Her response is as swift as it is deadly. Unity is maintained but blood runs through the halls of the Grand Cathedral. <laughs>